Last week I took a trade and I made 400% on that trade by only holding that trade for two days. And in this video, I will be doing a complete breakdown of why I took this trade and what made me hold this trade for two days. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you guys have been following me for a while, you guys know that I am a day trader. I don't swing trade very often. What I mean by day trade is that usually I buy and sell within the same day. At the end of the day, I'm completely flat on my account. And by swing trading, you mean that you hold a trade overnight. This trade I took was a swing trade. I held this trade for two days and I made approximately 400% of my investment. I had a couple of very good reasons because of which I took this high probability setup on Tesla. And in this video, I will be discussing exactly what I saw on the stock, that is Tesla, what I saw on the overall market that made me take this trade and practically catch the low of the short term downtrend. Before we jump on to the technicals of Tesla, let's first take a look at the overall market because that was a key reason for me taking this trade on the day I took it. Let's first take a look at SPY, which tracks the top 500 companies of the US stock market and it's kind of considered as a gold standard of how the overall market is doing in US. We can see that SPY has been channeling in between these trend lines. We have a couple of bounces from this trend line and a couple of bounces from this trend line as well. My entry on this trade was on 21st of December. Let's now take a look at what was happening on 20th of December. That is a day prior to my entry. If I zoom in a bit further, you guys will see that this is 20th of December right here. So SPY made a doji. What I mean by doji is that sellers tried to push it down, but then buyers stepped up. We saw increase in volume and when when I saw this, I was pretty confident that buyers are trying to hold this trend line because this trend line has been holding for the past one year. And this is the exact same reason why heading on to 21st of December, I was kind of long biased on the overall market. Let's now take a look at the daily chart of QQQ. That is a one day chart of Qs that tracks the tech sector and Tesla is a part of QQQ as well. So QQQ, similar to SPY, has been holding this trend line towards the downside and it's been holding this trend line towards the upside. So again, similar to Tesla, Qs have also been moving in between these two trend lines. Let's now zoom into this chart and see what was happening recently. My entry was again on 21st of December. On 20th of December, Qs found support right here and that is the reason I was liking for a break towards the upside both on Qs and SPY, the overall market. And that is one of the main contributing factors for me taking this trade on Tesla. Let's now finally take a look at the technicals of Tesla because my trade was on Tesla. Tesla had a good, very good, huge bullish move recently. And then since then, it's been consolidating in this channel. So it's kind of making this bull flag strategy right here. A bullish move towards the upside, followed by a flag pattern on the daily chart. If you guys have been following me for a while, you guys know that I watch Tesla every single day because I am a day trader. I like trading this stock. But recently, for the past two, three days prior to my entry point on Tesla, my entry was right here on 21st of December. I was watching Tesla on an intraday basis. Every time Tesla goes goes under $900 level, the tape was really strong and buyers were trying to hold the $900 level towards a downside as well. If you we see on the one day chart, we had a gap to fill right here. We filled the gap and since then we are not seeing any clean selling pressure on intraday basis under $900. So this was the higher time frame breakout of Tesla, SPY and QQQ. Let's now jump on to the 5 minutes and the 15 minutes chart, the intraday chart of Tesla from 21st of December and take a look at my entries and exits. This is the 5 minutes chart of Tesla from 21st of December. Right at the market open, we tried to break towards the upside but we failed and then we saw a clean flush towards the downside. We got, we made a flag pattern right here on the five minutes then we saw the next flush towards the downside it found a bottom around 885 to 888 dollars we pushed towards the upside then we were making this triangle on the five minutes but we broke this triangle towards the upside my entry on this trade the entry of my swing trade was at 11 40 am that was on this candle when tesla pushed towards the upside it broke the vwap and it reclaimed the 900 dollars level my entry was around 902 903 dollars level with the stop loss at around low of the day around 890 dollars that means i was risking 10 to 12 dollars on the underlying asset that is tesla in this case it's pretty hard to understand why i took this trade based on 
on the five minute chart, but as I broke down on the daily chart, I was liking the support of $900 level. So on this day, when I saw buying pressure above $900 level, because if we would have seen a clean flush towards the downside, I wouldn't have taken this trade. But in this case, we saw buyers push it back above $900 level. That's why on the daily timeframes, SPY also found a support, Q's also found a support, Tesla was also finding a support around $900 level. So it seemed like a good entry for a swing trade with a very, very tight stop loss. I was only risking around 10 to $12 on Tesla on this trade. So what I mean by buying pressure under $900 level is that whenever Tesla comes under $900 level, I was feeling that the tape and the level two is very, very strong. That is the reason reading the tape is very, very important. I understand a lot of traders talk about that if you are a swing trader, you don't need to be a master of tape reading. Tape reading is basically for day traders and scalpers like me. But in this case, I was able to score a really good entry because of my tape reading on my swing trade as well. So reading the tape has no harm. It will definitely give you good entries and good exits on your swing trade as well. Now, before we jump on to my entries and exits, like this video, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notification to learn more about day trading and my journey as a day trader. Let's now take a look at my entries and exits. My entry was at 11.40 a.m. Right here on December 21st, I got 1060 calls and the contracts were expiring on Jan 21st. Because this was a swing trade, I got Jan 21 expiry. That is approximately a month out expiry contracts. Now the question is, was I expecting such a big move towards the upside in the next two days? No, there was a luck factor as well, which I will be discussing soon. But my plan was that even if we see a slow grind towards the upside with a very tight stop loss and if we reach thousand or maybe even break thousand dollars level maybe within the first one or two weeks of the new year i will still be able to end this trade with a good enough profit and you guys can see on this trade i only took one contract because i was trying to catch the bottom of the market in that case i was trying to catch a v reversal my plan was to take one contract and then add on to my position if i see a confirmation so if i see a break of 920 or 930 the next day if i see that the buyers are taking control and if the market breaks all time high i will add on to my position but who knows the next day we had a good news with the stock and stock gapped up and if i would have added on to my position after that huge gap up it would have just ruined my average price on this trade that's why i just held on to my one contract but if you guys ask me what is my average position sizing on a swing trade because you guys have seen my daily recaps my day trading recaps i go anywhere between like 20 30 contracts if i'm trading tesla so i'm purely a day trader who swing trades every now and then I would say I take like one or two swing trades in a month and usually I invest around eight to ten thousand dollars on any single given trade but my strategy is different on swing trading I usually like to go in with the starter position maybe I will invest two to four thousand dollars of my account on a single given trade on the confirmation I will add further to my position to increase that trade value to around eight to ten thousand dollars on this given trade I only went in with 1500 dollars my plan was to add on to my position but i never got a pullback entry to add on to my position after my entry we saw a clean push towards the upside so there was a luck factor to this trade as well talking about luck factor that had a major role to play on this trade because i was expecting a slow grind towards the upside i was expecting tesla to break thousand dollars level maybe in january 2022 but it happened in the next two days itself and the news was because elon musk was officially done selling 10 percent of his tesla Tesla shares because if you guys don't know Elon Musk has been selling his shares recently 10% of his position on Tesla because of paying taxes or whatever personal reasons he had no one knows but he was officially done selling 10% of his position this news was released on 22nd of December before the market opened and because of this news Tesla started gapping up in the pre-market itself we can also see at the top here that this news was released on December 22nd let's now take a look at the daily chart of Tesla and see what happened on 22nd of December. My entry was right here on 21st of December around $905 level with the stop loss under $890. But after this news, you guys can see Tesla gapped up in the pre-market. It opened around $960, $968. So that means 
The stock price is approximately $60 up from my entry point, whereas my risk was only $15. So this means at the open of 22nd of December, the contract I got for like $1,500, they were already up like $3,000 or $3,500. That means I was already up 100% of my investment. On 22nd of December itself, Tesla broke $1,000 level towards the upside and my profits were stacking up. I was up 100%, then 200%, then 300% in like one or two days in 24 hours, which was insane. I was constantly posting on my Instagram stories how much I am up for the day because of the swing trade. So if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, the link will be in the description box below. Now, if you guys ask me where I took my profits on this trade because I only had one contract, my profit target was a break of $1,000 level towards the upside initially. But then we saw a crazy push towards the upside. I took my profits at the break of $1,070 level on 23rd of December. And the reason was because $1,070 is a critical resistance and support on the daily chart. We can see that we had a couple of bounces on Tesla from 1070 right here and 1070 right here. Talking about technicals, if you look at the technicals of QQQ, it's around a critical resistance area as well. This $400 is a critical resistance on QQQ. Similarly on SPY, SPY is around all time high. So I was expecting a bit of resistance on the overall market, especially because we have the low volume week incoming. The last week of December, the last week of the year is usually very, very low volume. Volume. So I just wanted to take my profits because my profit target got hit and also I will be traveling the last week of December. So I just wanted to close my position so that I can enjoy my vacation. Let's now take a look at my entries and exits again. My entry was at 11.40 a.m. on December 21st. My exit was at 12.28 p.m. on December 23rd. My entry fill price was at a premium price of 15.45. That means I paid $1,000. $545 for that contract. I got in 1060 calls, Jan 21st expiry, and my exit was at a fill price of 71.45. That means I sold that same contract at a price of $7,145, overall making $5,600 on that trade, which is a return of 362%, which is officially my best return percentage trade yet. Yes, I wish I would have added on to my position, but I never got a good entry to add on to my position. I got lucky as well because of the news but there was a luck factor involved but you can't just take a trade based on the luck factor right on this trade i had a proper risk defined i had a proper reward also defined uh, this was a swing trade my risk was only 10 to 15 dollars for the stock price to go against me and i caught a 150 dollars move in my favor so yes you will get lucky every now and then but for the luck factor to play out you need to have a good trade idea based on the technicals and the fundamentals as well that's it guys but before you go give this video a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notification because i'm releasing two to three new videos on day trading and my journey as a day trader every single week also if you want to see a few behind the scenes of a day trader and my pnl you guys can follow me on instagram the link will be in the description box below thank you for watching and i will see you guys in the next video